Okay, so today it's all about um, an autumn landscape. Um, the reference photo is quite detailed, but uh, we won't um, do it like that. Okay, so I'll provide the reference photo because it's still going to be up to you if you want to do it as detailed as the photo or um, if you're going to do something similar to mine, which is um, a mix of both, uh, more loose and then um, you can always add more details if you want later or you can keep everything just loose and um, simple and just focus more on the colors. Okay, so today um, I'll be using a rectangular um, shaped pad. Okay, so this is from another uh, video that I, I made that um, will be in an article that I will share. So if you're, you guys are also interested in watercolor flowers, you will see this in the near future. Okay, so today, again, um, autumn landscape. Um, I will start also with the sketch today because the sketch will be very easy, very um, basic, so that you can also see um, how I go about things. So here um, is another one, so I need to remove this. So I'll just, I would just use a palette knife because this is a block. All right. Okay, so um, use paper that's a bit on the thicker side because um, you will be using a lot of water for this. Okay, and I will be using colors from the Classico and let's see, the Vista. Okay, um, the Classico because I will need all the very warm colors, all the All right, so again, um, we shall do this scene. I'll just show you quickly. And I will be sharing this. Um, even when this gets uploaded to YouTube, um, I will also share this in the comments. Okay, so I will put this away to the side. Okay, so time to sketch first. Okay, so um, for this, if you don't like to see lines as usual, um, use your pencil that's not too dark. Okay, so again, um, look at your reference photo. I would just like to check to first add the line on where the, the green of the ground ends, somewhere here, and then add just the general, there's only one tree that's very like on the forefront. And I will just create the placement of it, just like this, very, just the basic shape so it's just really a guide I'm just blocking in okay so don't you don't need to sketch everything in so much detail okay so this is also the nice thing about doing landscapes you can relax and just do things loosely okay so if you saw that it's just a very basic sketch okay is it too dark? Let me add some light. Okay. Okay, that's brighter. All right, so let's do this now. Um, if you want, um, I would recommend that you premix your colors. Okay, so if you premix your colors, then you can paint continuously without worrying about things drying too soon. So let's do that. Let's first premix our colors. Okay, so I have again the classical classical palette with the classic colors. So I will now also use a big brush. This is a number 10 round brush. You can use even bigger, 12 if you have. Um, also depending on the size of your paper. But a 10 to 12 would be a good size for um, looser painting. Or if you're more comfortable using... Um, a flat brush you can also use a flat brush to add your details okay okay so you can use your brush to add a lot of water to each well like so so that you can prep your colors so I will prep my yellows my orange green and red okay so i'll prep at least um those th three 
four colors so that at least I can paint continuously wet on wet. Okay, so we'll be doing wet on wet today, which is very rare for me because if you've seen my other tutorials, my lives, I usually do a lot of wet and dry. But today for a loose landscape, we will do a wet and wet. Okay, so don't be afraid. We're all in this together. Okay, so we'll start with our yellow. We actually have two yellows, so let me just add another one. We will have our cooler yellow and then our warmer yellow. Okay, so let's start with our lemon yellow right here. Um, this is um, from Zen Art Supplies, so this is the Zen Art Supplies Turner Collection. So this is a squirrel and synthetic mix that I really like because it's soft but springy because of the synthetic, but soft because of the squirrel hair. So um, as you can see, um, the details already erased because I heavily used this. Okay, so let's start with the yellow. Okay, let's prep it here. And next, let's add the warmer yellow, of course, because we need warm yellows for our autumn for sure. Okay, so a lot of it. Make sure, um, test it out, make sure that it's uh, pigmented enough so that you don't create colors that are too light. But you can always just get from the pan, like midway, mid-painting, if you feel like it's too light and just add to your wet surface. So this is actually a perfect yellow to red. Okay, and now of course we will also add the orange. So don't um, skimp on your materials, okay? I know things can be expensive, but at least if you use it properly, it won't be a waste because um, you won't end up with a failure because of skimping, okay? I used to also, you know, try not to use too much of my art supplies, but in the end, you will regret it. So just use what you should. Okay, so next, I'm also going to get um, some of the red here, okay? So this vermilion, because it's very intense warm red which is perfect so let me just get this is from the vermilion from the Soriso. okay so all the palettes are from zen art supplies um virtuoso series of palettes i will be using mainly colors from two okay so i added a, um, a lot of the vermilion and then now the red so this is pure raw red. So this is a more neutral red, just to mix in with a very, very warm red of the vermilion. Okay, so I really like to pre-mix when I'm working wet on wet because uh, I'm not a very wet on wet painter. And I just find that it's easier this way because we need to work quickly when you're working wet on wet. Okay, so now let's um, go and have some green. Okay, so we have some olive green also from the Cerisa, which is perfect for the fall colors because it's um, a warm green and it's not a like a plasticky kind of green, but more um, natural. As you can see, it's perfect for um, autumn. The green of autumn. Olive green is one of my favorite colors, my favorite greens at least. Um, it's very easy to just add a bit of yellow or a bit of blue or brown to change it. Let's clean this up. Okay, so be sure that you have um, paper towel and tissue. Um, you will need it. 
Okay, so let's start painting. Let's set our pre-mixed colors and our pans ready to the side if we need to add more colors. We'll add the brown later um, because we will do the colors first and then add the browns of the trees, of the trunk, and the branches after. Okay, so we start by wetting the whole page. Um, if you want some... on the sides then you tape it so you have white so i just use uh, masking tape for this Let's start by wetting our paper. Okay, so I'm going to use my um, cat's tongue flat brush for this because it's it's a wide flat brush. So just use your water and just wet. If you have a spray, you can also spray. So I'm going to wet this very wet, that it's very glossy. So that's why you need thick paper, because otherwise, if it's not thick, it will buckle right away. So if it's not thick, and that's the only paper you have, um, if you stretch it, it will help a lot. So pre-stretch your paper. Okay, so very wet that it has a glossy sheen. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. Now um, we will have some blue. Okay, so for this I'm going to use um, the blue from this palette. Okay, so I'm going to use manganese blue from the Vista palette. Okay, so manganese blue, um, it's a nice blue for the sky. Okay, so drop it in where there's a lot of concentration. So just look at your reference. Remember that this will dry lighter, so don't be afraid if it looks a bit dark because it will still dry lighter and if it does try and it's too light then you can always um, add another layer later on okay and now that we have this down while the paper is still wet let's now add the yellow let's start with the cool yellow which is here the yellow on this side and here on the edges has a cool yellow tinge to it so we'll start with that because there's still greenery here if you find that it's too light you can always Add more and because your paper is wet it will just spread smoothly okay so next let's use our cooler yellow a uh, warmer yellow rather here So I like to use the cat's tongue because um, you can use the full length of it or just the tip to paint in those details.
and then you can um, you can already um, blow dry this if you want or you can start adding more intense colors in my case I will okay let's go with the orange I'm using a round brush now just to dab in the orange for the more intense trees right here Okay, so remember your paper is still wet, so the colors are still going to spread. Let's add some of the red. Okay, and at this point, I'm going to use a blow dryer now so I can um, work with more details. So I actually forgot to get some table salt, but um, it's a good technique to use also when you're doing uh, landscapes, textural, have very, very textural um, works. Um, if you sprinkle some salt here and there, um, it gives you a nice texture that's like, you know, how the leaves look from a distance. So you can also do that technique um, here and there. Uh, for example, this, um, the bushes and here and don't overdo it, just some sections sprinkle some um, table salt on the still wet areas um, it's going to give you a very nice textural effects once it dries okay so um, let's continue um, i'm going to continue going to use my round brush number 10. okay so i'm going to now add um, extra details okay so i'm going to go to my um, bright yellow Okay, now we have our warm yellow. We can now go to our orange. So on this side, it's more yellow with just little bits of orange. So we'll start from this side with more orange. And then let's bring some of the orange here. But now let's use more of the tip of the brush. So it's more controlled. So we're transitioning from orange to bits of orange. Okay, this is because the light is here. So the trees, uh, the leaves of the tree is bright, uh, lighter and brighter and here it's more in the shadow i try not to cover the original first layer that we did it's, i tried to have some still peeking through so it looks, looks even more like 
how trees are where you see the background still um, showing through. I'm also still going to add bits of this red here and there. Not too much. So have a nice transition from the deep colors to the brightness over here. Let's not forget this side. Okay, so let's leave the side to dry a bit and let's move it here. So as you can see, very impressionistic. Okay, so you don't have to do super detailed. Um, but at the end, once you add the brown branches and trunks of the tree later on, it will just all come together. Okay, at, at this point, it looks just very abstract. Um, but I'm fine with it. I like it. It's a change from my usual very realistic, very detailed. So this is actually a nice composition because um, this center here is has a uh, very lemony, more greenish colors, and it's um, in between these two more um, orangey colors, so it's it balances everything together. So when you look for reference photos, try to also think of the composition because um, that will help a lot in your final in the final outcome of your work. Okay, so in school, this we would call this um, double tension. So there's a tension because of these two. It sort of also gives you this um, space here, some break. So it's not too overwhelming. So your mind just, uh, your eye just goes around. Okay, so I like it. I like it as it is. Um, very abstract at this point. So um, I do encourage for you to also try out painting landscapes gives you um, gives you the opportunity to paint more abstract okay so now I'm using um, olive green over this more lemony yellow section for the trees that are still on the greenish side but starting to turn yellow Uh, when the red and green mix a bit, it will give you colors on the brown side. So try to just layer on top and don't scrub because otherwise if you scrub, then they will mix instead of just layer and it will turn out more brown than layered. Okay, so now um, let's add the green. So here the green is um, on the brighter side. So let's mix um, brighter green. Okay, so I have that. I have um, a nice bright green right here. Um, I'll show you. Okay, so from the Vista palette, we have Oriole and green. So it's perfect for the next layer of green for the ground. Yes, uh, isn't autumn just beautiful colors? Lovely, lovely colors. I think I also like... Um, to call this um, it's cold but not intensely so okay so oriole in green um, we will layer it over this previously washed out layer of olive
and we will leave this to dry and then add uh, more intense colors of orange and red and then we can move on to the branches. So let's add our intense orange. Intense red. Okay, so no regrets with your overmixing. You'll still use it. Okay, and now let's um, let's dab in smaller sections of the color. So we will concentrate for these trees because they are nearer to us. So they will have um, more detail, let's say, compared to these, which are further at the back. So we'll have less visible details. Okay, so um, the thing with landscapes is that you have to think about your foreground, your middle ground, and your background. So the, the sky is the furthest from, so you don't really need to do much if you're already contented with how it looks like. Then these are more in the foregra uh, middle ground and these are at the foreground. Okay, so just think of those and you will get the hang of landscapes. So anything that's near you will have more detail. Um, further, we'll have less detail and we'll also be less vibrant. Okay, so let's start with the orange. Okay, smaller dabs here and there. Again, just using the tip of your brush. Okay, so now let me add a more um, intense green. So let's mix the aureole in green. Okay, with a little bit of um, permanent green light. And also a little bit of the jade green. So we're, we're trying to have green, but not green that's too fresh or too tropical and you can always test it out okay so um, try to have pa extra paper that you can test out your colors in um, if you're not sure so that you can test it before you commit it to your paper okay so let's use it for these sections to show the shadow that the trees cast on the ground. So remember, some parts you still need to have some of the lighter green pop through. Okay, so now your ground doesn't look so flat anymore. You see it has areas with the very pale green, mid green, darker green. 
Okay, and now we can start to add some more um, green here. And then we also have a few bush bushes here with orange. So we will add a bit of that, just the lighter orange. Add a bit of yellow as well. So always think of transitioning. If there's green and there's orange, there will also be some yellow. And I will dry this before I add the branches, um, this area. But here it's pretty dry, so we can already um, do the branches. Okay, so let's create a mixture here. So I will be using sepia, okay, from here, from the Vista palette. So if you want your um, tree trunk to be um, on the warmer side, you can use um, a warmer brown. That's up to you. So let's say I can use sepia with red or with burnt shenna. You can mix the two. Um, in my case, I have this nice Indian red right here. So I will mix Indian red with um, sepia as well. I'll have two brown mixtures. So this is um, sepia with some Indian red. You can use burnt chan as well with brown. And then you can start adding your um, tree trunks and branches. Okay, so it won't be one full visible thing. Um, some parts will be hidden behind leaves. So plot it out. You can sketch this if you want to, if you're not sure how to go about things. In my case, I will just add it here and there. So space. So remember, just have it peeking through here and there. That way it looks more realistic. And of course, as it goes further away, it will be smaller in size and thinner. So have it tapering. Okay, and then you can always add later. Um, stop at some point uh, so that you don't overdo. Okay, let's do the next tree. So what I do with the trunk is I try to blend it down to the surface.
we will add lighter brown, just more water to your brown. And add trees at the back. Okay, so a lot of layering. Again, to suggest depth. And let's go here. So for here, we'll add some green to our brown. Sepia with some of the olive green mix. So some would like to use the rigger brush because it gives you um, more unpredictable lines, more natural looking lines. So um, switch to a rigger brush if you want to have fun with your long thin lines. Um, I will add the darker areas here and there. So I will mix some indigo with the brown. Just for a more muted, deeper brown. So I am really just adding all the details that I want to add. Again, you don't have to add everything. You can just concentrate on the more visible areas and you can leave the others. You don't have to follow your uh, reference exactly. Okay, so this is purely um, self-interpretation at some point. I just really like to add um, all these little details just to help with the perspective. So here I have some shadow that I would like to add as well. It sort of shows that there's a gap between the trees here and the tree, the bright tree on the side. Okay. Don't forget to also add some branches sticking out from here, um, but just, just a few, nothing too much. And don't make it too dark. So using the indigo with olive green and a little bit of the sepia brown, let's use it to create the darker shadows here. You can also use ultramarine blue. So all the area near the trees will be darker because they will of course shed shadow from the light
just deepen the areas at the back where the, a lot of the trees are converged together because they will be in the deeper shadow. And you can have your landscape like so, already finished. Again, it's up to you how much further into detail you want to do things or how very realistic or how close to your um, reference photo. But um, the thing to keep in mind will be your colors. Of course, you will have your autumn colors. Um, try to mix your colors beforehand, especially during the wet and wet sections. Okay, so this is my um, autumn landscape. Um, not super easy, but not super hard either. And again, you can be as loose as a few steps earlier. That's also fine. You can be more abstract if you want. Or you can um, go, go into detail. You can, you can still add more to this if you want. Or you can stay at this, you can stop at this point. So this is how big it's, it looks like in actuality. Okay, this is the finished thing. I'm not sure yet. Tomorrow I might look at it and, you know, feel like I want to add more details, late, uh, more details here and there. So that's the thing. I also recommend that you um, stop, you take a break and, um, you know, give your eyes the chance to rest, give your brain the chance to um, rest. And uh, usually when you come back from a rest, um, you'll see things much clearer, much better. And that's the best way to also stop yourself from overworking. Okay, so I hope you give this a try and thank you for joining me. And do share with a group um, if you did try it out, your own version. I, I always love to see uh, everyone's version of things. We always end up with um, different paintings and that's lovely. Okay, so have a great day ahead, uh, the rest of the day. And um, I hope to see you on the next one. Bye guys.